What's up, YouTube? I am Sine and I'm back with another video. Hello, motherfucker. And today, I just wanted to come and make a, a simple video. Um, I wanted to talk about my experience at Gold's Plastic Surgery, where I got my liposuction. Um, I also got a BBL and hips. So we'll kind of get into that more into the video, but that was exactly what my procedure was supposed to be um, when I got my surgery done. Um, so um, I'm gonna really just start from the beginning and I'm gonna tell you the truth about everything, my whole experience there, what I went through, um, basically what my process was and everything up until like basically now. So um, first I reached out to Ghost Plastic Surgery. I think it was like February. I had been, I had the baby, so I had figured that I was gonna have surgery. I had already made up my mind. I just really wanted to focus on liposuction and I didn't need a butt, but I wanted to get a BBL so that I could fill in the areas that I had my cellulite and like the hip dips and stuff like that. So that was the purpose of me getting the BBL just to kind of fill in my butt in certain areas, but I wasn't making my butt bigger. So um, in February, I reached out to them. I did my consultation. I paid my deposit over the phone. They gave me my date. So my original date was supposed to be for May 9th. I'm sorry, May 18th. I wanted to do it before my birthday because I really wanted to have my surgery before my birthday because I just was convinced that I was going to be snatched by my birthday, right? So I was like, all right, I want to have this surgery. I paid my deposit, which was $450. I paid $50 for the consultation, $450 for the deposit and they gave me my date so um basically first i had to do my medical clearance and paperwork i mean my blood work and that was just it just took it was like a process but that was really on behalf of my doctor's office but eventually i got it done so i turned that stuff in and then i had to go for my bmi check that was a breeze they just take your weight you know make sure your bmi is in order or whatever and that was it so your next appointment is your COVID test and then your COVID test, um, they test you for COVID and then you um, get your post-op package. We got your, like everything in there besides your, your Faha. Cause they give you a Faha like when you go for your first massage. So basically um, I go for my COVID test and I test positive for COVID. I know you fucking lying because, oh my God, you know. Mind you, this is five days before my surgery. So I test positive for COVID. Long story short, one of my friends had COVID and came around me and I ended up with COVID. So I test positive for COVID and they have to research, schedule my surgery, but they had to push me. They pushed me out like two weeks. So they rescheduled me for like May 30th. So it was after my birthday, but I was okay with it. Cause I was like, you know, I'll be that at least you'll enjoy my birthday or whatever. Cause I'm just thinking I'm a bounce back and it wasn't nothing like that. Like <laughs> you can't, I wasn't bouncing back in a week anyway. So it was okay. I, um, went for my next my next COVID test on my birthday because it was right before my new surgery date. I'm sorry, it wasn't the 30th, it was the 29th. So my new surgery date was the 29th. I went three days before to get my COVID test done. Um, basically, they made me do a COVID test before I went in. I did a COVID test, it came back negative. I went in, took a COVID test. It came back positive, y'all. Gotcha, bitch. They called me the next day, like in five o'clock in the afternoon, talking about my COVID test was positive. And I'm like, I just took a COVID test. It was just negative. This can't be. I'm not trying to reschedule the surgery. So the next morning, earlier, like eight o'clock in the morning, I go take another COVID test and it come back negative. So I'm like, I called him. I'm like, my COVID test just came back negative. Y'all said my COVID test was positive. I'm still trying to get my surgery. And they like, no, you took your test here, came back positive. Like you got to wait two weeks. So basically they pushed me out for my next COVID test two weeks, but they don't give me a new surgery date. So two weeks come, I go in and take my COVID test. I get there, right? Mind you, I live upstate New York. I had to drive to Harlem. That's like an hour, 15 minutes away. So I go down there and the lady's like, you don't need to take a test. You were supposed to really get tested outside. So basically she was saying like, they would have been able to accept my previous test. So because they pushed me out two weeks, I had to go and do everything over. My medical clearance was not valid no more. My blood work was not valid no more. So I had to do all of that stuff out. So they rescheduled me now for July 20th. So I'm pissed. I'm like, that's a month from now. I'm like, I got to wait all this time to get my surgery. Like, you know, originally I'm expecting to do it a week before my birthday. 
So I'm pissed. They like, I'm I'm calling them, calling them, telling them to have somebody call me back. Nobody calls me back. Cause I'm now I'm trying to figure out why would they make me. I called them several times. I spoke to them like at least two or three times and asked them if I would have to drive down there from upstate because I live too far and I don't have time to be driving because I have a baby. These people told me that I had to come. And then I get there and the girl tell me I don't even have to take a test. So I was really mad because I'm like, all right, y'all really just wasting my time. Plus y'all rescheduled my surgery for no reason. They they like, oh yeah, we're gonna have somebody call you. It'll take 24, 48 hours to have somebody call you back. I never got a call back. These people never called me back about that situation. The only call back I finally got because mind you, I had new appointments coming up because I had a new surgery day. But I had did um, once I found out that I had to get my surgery date in July because you got to have it within a certain time. I was around the time that I needed to have my, my blood work and my medical clearance done. So because I got it done and everything was done, they moved my surgery up a week. So they moved me. My new surgery date was the 12th. So I'm like, all right, I'm happy about it. I'm like, oh, they moved me up a week at least. At least it's a week. You know, it's not like an extra week. You know, I'm trying to be positive about it. I'm like, yeah, they moved me up. It's really nothing. Like, I'm, you know, I'm just happy about it or whatever. The week before my surgery and they call me like, they call me and they just like, hey, you want to have your surgery basically that Friday because they had moved my surgery up to that Monday, but then they had to move me again because the doctor was leaving or something. So they like, you want to have your surgery Friday? So basically, it's two days away. So I'm like, of course, I'm like, yeah, like, you know, I don't have nothing to do. I'm just here. Like, you know, I already got arrangements for it. So I'm like, you know, the sooner the better for me. Because I'm just like ready to get my surgery done, obviously. Because like, at this point, we damn near at the end of the summer. That was the point of me getting my surgery scheduled for May because I did not want to be getting my surgery done very late. And then I end up getting pushed all the way out to July. That's two months. So by the time I finish healing, it's August. So, you know, I like that was just everything that was really miss making me mad because the whole point of me having it done with in May was to be doing it at the beginning of cert the month the the summers because I knew I had to heal. So like that just even they though they moved me up, it still was an inconvenience for me. It just made me mad. I had told them I had already made arrangements and they just did not care about that. And it was really their fault. I had reached out to like one of the administrators that I had spoke to before when I had tested positive for COVID. I emailed this guy. And it's like, I know you're in a professional setting. You definitely got my email. Like I worked in an office before. You see every email that comes through to you. You did not miss my email. So that was just rude. So then for them to call me and like move my surgery up, I feel like they was trying to make me happy in a way because they was dead ass wrong. No, doctor. <laughs> no, you don't fuck that. So well, fast forward, um, we two days before surgery. So I didn't think I was going to end up getting a surgery the day before, the, the next day. And then that night, it had like really flooded in the city. The subways flooded. It was like really raining a lot. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I just, just like everything is stopping me from getting the surgery tomorrow. And then mind you, this place, they supposed to send your medication to the pharmacy 24 hours before your surgery. So they always tell you that you're going to get your medication at least by 5 p.m. the day before your surgery. So you can start taking your antibiotics 12 hours before your surgery. So my surgery was scheduled for 10 a.m. I had to start taking my antibiotics 10 p.m. And I was supposed to be at the facility by 9 a.m., right? Keep all this in mind. So... Um, it's the day before my surgery and it's like five o'clock and I called the pharmacy and they didn't have no medication. So I'm like, dang, they got no medication. So two hours go by, it's seven o'clock. I still ain't getting no call from the pharmacy because my pharmacy calls me or texts me when my medication is ready. So I'm like, why didn't you hit me up yet? I call the place where I'm getting my surgery and let them know like, hey, nobody sent my medication. And they always say they're gonna escalate it. They're gonna escalate it. They're gonna escalate it. Oh my God, stop fucking lying. Like I had to ask them on the phone, what does escalate mean? Cause y'all, honestly, y'all keep telling me that and it ain't nothing happening. Ain't nobody called me about it, nothing. So he tell me he gonna escalate it and somebody gonna give me a call. So now, the pharmacy is closed, they're closed, and I don't got no medication. So I'm like tripping because I'm like, dang, I'm supposed to have my antibiotics. I hope that don't mess me up tomorrow my surgery. So the next morning come, so I had to leave before the pharmacy even opened. And I had to be there by 9 a.m. And on top of that, it's storming outside, it's raining. So we had to go. 
I didn't get, I didn't get, um, somebody came to pick up my baby. I didn't get to get my medication or whatever. But ne nevertheless, like, they never even sent my medication to the pharmacy. So I get there. And you're supposed to have your medication with you or they give you like some type of fine. Now, this is the things I don't understand. This is, And this would be the same thing with like these nail techs and these hairstylists. I don't understand how you can find me for something, but you won't find yourself. Or there's no repercussions for you doing the same thing or fucking up. Understand. I don't understand, bitch. I don't understand. What happens when y'all didn't call my medication in? So I'm in the surgery and the lady who is like helping me before the surgery, she to give out the medications and she get you ready and everything. She's like, do you want to get the surgery? Like, well, she was like, do you want to go get your meds? And I'm like, I live upstate. Like nobody's not driving upstate. It would take three hours just to go upstate and get my meds and come back. So she basically like asking me, she giving me this look like, I don't think you should do it without your meds. But I'm like, I'm here, one. Two, nobody's leaving. Like, it, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just didn't make no sense. So I'm like, she said, well, we can give you something else. So they gave me a Benadryl, two 500 milligram Tylenol, and an antibiotic. That was it. That was what I got. Mind you, my medication was supposed to be Percocet, Xanax and antibiotics. So compare a Tylenol to like a Percocet. Now my I still had the local anesthesia, but I'm gonna get into what really happened without me having my medication. So mind you, this is 100% their fault. Never sent my medication to the pharmacy. So she like giving me this look like I don't advise you do it, but I'm like I ain't got no choice. So mind you, Medicaid, my 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 surgery is at 10. They didn't even call me back to like start getting my information until like 11.30, I think. And then I still had to wait. So my surgery didn't get started until three o'clock. That's how behind they was. He was doing, he did only five surgeries that day and I still had one person behind me. And like, they didn't start me till three o'clock. My surgery was at ten. And they want you to be there at nine. Talking about you gotta be there on time. Every fifteen minutes you there late. You got you get a two hundred dollar fee. All these fees. And y'all ain't even punctual. I ain't get it. So I'm like, all right. Um, we finally starting surgery. Mind you, I had people bring me. So they getting it, not impatient, but they trying to figure out what's going on with me because after a certain amount of time they had me back there, even though they didn't start my surgery. Mind you, surgery only two to three hours, right? Okay, so they didn't start my surgery till about three o'clock. The doctor, um, you know, he started making the markings or whatever. And, you know, they take their pictures, stuff like that. They had gave me the medication. It started making me a little bit drowsy. Then they put you in this cold room. The room's so cold. You sit in there butt-ass naked. No clothes on. Naked. Just naked. Like, no clothes on. And you just laying there, like, not covered up, freezing. I was in that bitch cold. So he, you know, he doing my anesthesia and stuff like that. And it wasn't that bad. But bitch, once he started the lipo, that mother, that, that like that shit hurt so bad. That shit hurt it. It hurt so bad. And when that lady finally came back in the room, she said, see, I told you. And I was like, oh my God, it hurt so bad. It felt like, um like stinging I could feel it I could feel it it was like it was like my body was numb but the thing inside you I could feel it vibrating it was oh my god I hated it oh my god I hated that experience like it was so painful and it was because I didn't have my meds it's because these people never sent my medication to the pharmacy how is that acceptable how is that acceptable to like not send somebody medication? So I'm in there, in there, like damn near screaming. At one point, the lady was like, it was another girl in there. She was like, cause they just kept, it was just girls coming in and out the room. Like I get that they work there. So they see people naked all the time. They do the surgeries all the time, but they just coming in and out the room. You got the cleaning lady coming in and out the room. They coming in and out the room. Um, They just, they, this place. Don't get me started on this place. So 
like halfway through my surgery because every time the doctor did one thing like he did the anesthesia he walked out the room he did the front he walked out the room like he do one thing and he walk out so then i guess the machine they had was moving too slow it was something wrong with it so it wasn't sucking the fat out that fast so it was taking longer mind you the shit was hurting so not only is it hurting but it's taking longer than it should Right. So finally, he said something about it and they switched the machine out. So it started working better. But then they start having this meeting back there. My, this place is so ghetto. It's like ghetto. Oh, the ghetto. Like I've been following this place on Instagram for at least maybe two years at this point because I knew I wanted to go there eventually to get liposuction because I just always had like a little pudge in my stomach. <laughs> I always had a little pudge in my stomach, so I wanted to get rid of it. So I knew I was going to get lipo, and I followed this place, and I live in New York. So I just was like, oh, yeah, this is the place I want to go to. Don't do it. They, it's just ghetto. It's unprofessional. They just, it's in the city, so I guess that's explains a lot. But just the staff, like how the girls dress. Like the day of my surgery, it was a girl there. She had on this black dress, like a black scrunch dress, in like in like first slides. It wasn't even cute. Like, it just looked ghetto at a professional surgery center. I just I just thought it was weird. They super ghetto. So, I'm back there having my surgery, like, halfway through. And they are, like, all of the staff that's in there, they in there having a staff meeting. But they, like, in there going off on each other. It's real petty, girl. Like, the one girl, she's saying, yeah, you know, um, well, you had said such and such to me. And them fighting words. I'm like... Girl, I'm back here getting surgery. Like, it just, it was just ghetto. Like, you know, like, I feel like I don't mind stuff like that. But not in no place where I'm getting no service done. I just feel like when I'm doing something, when I'm paying money for something, I just want it to not be ghetto. I just don't want a ghetto experience. If I want to, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just was too ghetto. It was just too much. Like, everything about this place is just ghetto. Like, it's just ghetto it was too much it was just too much and then um so i mean i'm trying to think if it was anything else that really happened that day i don't really think it was nothing else that really happened but the experience was ghetto the best part part of about it probably that went the smoothest was the day of my massage because they got me right up there they had me in and out within an hour and didn't take long i had my ass back to where i'm from why i stay so i just feel like that was like the smoothest experience. But other than that, the surgeon, he didn't even give me hips. He did the lipo. I'm happy with how my stomach looks, but I'm not happy with everything else. It, see, the thing is I had kind of like, um, I kind of have like hips, but I have hip dips also. So he was supposed to fill in the hip dips. So like my hips, basically I'm saying is my waist is smaller than my hips. So I have where my hips go out, but they dip on the side. And he didn't fix that. He just didn't fix it. And I'm like, why did I pay y'all for hips? My whole surgery procedure was BBL and hips and lipo. So he didn't even give me what I wanted. So I just feel like the whole experience was a waste. I would much rather have spent the money and went out of town. And it was a number of reasons why I didn't do that. Because I just felt like it was just all convenience to, for me to stay in town. Plus, like I said, I had been following this place. So, I had seen their results. I seen people. I was like, all right, I just I just go there. I'll save me the time, the convenience, and stay in town and go there. And it was a mess. It was a shit show. It was a hot-ass mess. It was a hot-ass mess. Yeah, it was a mess. And, um... Like, honestly, I I do not recommend. <laughs> Scale from 1 to 10, I give it mm, maybe like a 4 or a 5. And that's just because the doctor was okay. But like I said, he didn't even do what I really wanted. So I give that place like a 4. I'm so serious. Like, I would definitely recommend people going somewhere else. Just the professionalism. It's going to aggravate you. Because they ghetto. At first, I felt like everything was going smooth. Because don't get me wrong. I had, even though I had been following this place, I had seen negative reviews of them also. 
But I just feel like everybody experience ain't the same experience. I've seen celebrities go here, child. I done seen all that. They a catfish. I said, hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. They is a catfish. And then, the, like, right before my surgery, when I went for my COVID test, my, how could I forget? So the day I go for my COVID test, my last COVID test, this is before my last surgery date, right? I go for my COVID test, but they had, like I said, I had to take the COVID test before I went in. I wasn't taking the COVID test at the facility no more. They wanted me to bring my COVID test results in person, drive down there just to bring my COVID test results in person because they said they had to give me my information packet. And when I got down there, the girl was like, "You, why are you here? And she was like, because it looked like you got, she was talking to me. She like, it looked like you got rescheduled. I said, they done rescheduled me so many times and they keep telling me I got to come down here for this packet. I already done got twice already. And she just shook her head because she know it's ghetto and she know it don't make no sense. So, um, yeah, so I get there. I bring them my COVID test results. The COVID test results was done two days before my appointment, but it was too many days before my surgery because I had my COVID test was scheduled with them for five days before my surgery. And that's how many days you got to have your COVID test in. So I had to go get a COVID test done in New York City. Mind you, I'm in Harlem. I don't know nothing about Harlem. I just know that one place in Harlem and I use a GPS every time I go. So she like, yeah, you got to go take a COVID test. It's a, C it's a CVS on um, 125th. Mind you, 125th is one of the busiest streets in Harlem. So I go to 125th with the CVS. They don't even do COVID. At the minute I walked in, I knew they ain't doing no COVID test. I could just tell. They ain't even do COVID tests. She was like, no, we don't do COVID tests. Luckily, the lady was talking to me. She was like, yeah, um, you can go across the street to the city MD. It was a urgent care right across the street, luckily. Mind you, it's hot as hell this day. It was a heat wave in New York City on this specific day. So I don't park my car two blocks away. It's hot as hell. I go to the urgent care. But it's like a little wait in there. And I could tell it was going to be a little wait. So I had to go put more money on my car on the meter. So finally, I get in there. I um sign in for the little thing, and I just wait for a little bit, and then I do my COVID test. Finally, I do my COVID test, and um, you know, it came back negative. So I'm like, all right, all good. My but at this point, two hours don't went by. So <laughs> I'm high. I'm just irritated. I'm just ready to go. So I get back to the place. They call me right to the back. I just get the fuck up out of there at that point. But that, that's what I'm saying. They constantly inconvenience me. I get all the way down there. Y'all talking about I got to go take a COVID test. And I ain't even from around there. What if I ain't had nowhere to go around there? Because that's what I was thinking when she said that. I was like, like, where am I going to go around here? I'm going to have to Google. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I had a freaking search. And my phone was messed up. I had got a new phone that same day. My phone was messed up and I didn't want to go to the city. So I'm trying to use my phone, my glitchy ass uh, um, iPhone. I'm trying to use that phone and it just didn't work. So I had ordered a new phone um, that day. I just went and picked it up from the store when I got back home. But like, it was just inconvenience after inconvenience. That place was just a mess. It's a mess. Don't count on them to call you back. Don't count on them to really give you what you want. Honestly, they just, they just really taking your money. And it's incredible to see all the people that was getting surgeries. I mean, big girls, little girls. It was so many people getting surgeries. And if they wasn't there for surgeries, they was there because they was interested. It was just like, I'm like, damn. When I went to get my massage, I'm like, look at all these girls in here. It's a girl in every booth getting them. Like, it's serious. They doing a lot of massages in that place, but they need to stop. If you're doing it, stop it. Get some help. <laughs> they need to quit, bitch, because it was a mess ghetto to say the least i'm just i'm not joking i ain't joking i'm not joking that place is a hot mess i do not recommend <laughs> i do not recommend so that's just my opinion about ghost plastic surgery you know wasn't Honestly, I feel like I should I should have went somewhere. Like, see, I'm from Florida, so I could have really like took a flight, went to Florida. I could have did a recovery home. I could have stayed at my mom's house. I would have had help with my like. Listen, 
it was not worth the experience was not worth it not going to that place i really should have went with my first thought and just went to florida but i learned my lesson honestly i would never i wouldn't even go there for them to do a goddamn facial on me that place just was oh my god like i should have just listened to the reviews and all the stuff that i've seen about that place but like i said i'm happy with my lipo but they did not do what i wanted them to do i didn't and the reason why i'm not mad about it is because i didn't need no butt so i didn't like my butt looks good i you know even if they had not did nothing to my butt my butt would still look good but they didn't do nothing to my hips and that's that just not did not make me happy because i was expecting a certain look and i didn't get it so yeah i don't recommend i don't recommend that you spend your money at this place do not wish your money i didn't even go back there for my massages like i went somewhere else because it's just not worth it and i paid for the massages in my package so that tells you for me to go somewhere else and spend money elsewhere it just goes to show that it was just not the experience is not worth it save your money do not go to gold's plastic surgery do not go. I don't know what the Atlanta locations is like or the New Jersey locations, but the New York locations do not go. It's going to be ghetto. I mean, if you like ghetto shit, then... No, we were going to be twirling back to the hood, honey. You know what I'm saying? But I don't mind hood shit because like, I done been around hood shit my whole life. But I don't like hood shit to the point where the job don't get done. You know what I'm saying? Like... I done been in, you know, I done got my nails done in somebody's house, my lashes done in somebody's house, my hair done in somebody's house, like stuff like that. And it ain't the most professional environment. But as long as you doing what needs to be done, I don't really care. Like, I don't mind them having a, a staff meeting. And them, I, don't, I didn't mind all that. But when what I'm doing, what I'm paying for, don't get done properly, then we got a problem. So honestly, don't go to that place. I mean, they're going to... I'm not gonna say they're gonna jack you up, but it's a waste of money. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of your patience. Ain't nobody got time for that. Cause it ain't worth it, baby. It's not worth it. Just don't.